Hello everyone, it's Lorelai and welcome back to episode 1 part 10. The last time we left off, a lot of things happened. We saw a development in Natsuhi and Jessica's relationship, then George proposed to Shannon, and there's still Rudolph's strange premonition. Anyway, if you like my content, please consider giving this video a like or subscribing, it really helps a lot. Without further ado, let's just get right into it. Shannon entered the entrance hall to the mansion with a tottering gait. Her chest was filled almost to the bursting point with a mixture of exaltation and uncertainty that she couldn't easily describe. After stopping for a second in front of the servant room to take a deep breath and calm her heart, she opened the door. Inside, Goda, who had been ordered to take the midnight shift at the mansion tonight, was absorbed in an old, worn-out crossword puzzle magazine. He looked up for an instant to see whether one of the family had come, but when he realized that it was a fellow servant, he returned to his puzzle as if nothing had happened. That's such an asshole behavior. Ah, <laughs> ここを開けてもいいものか困っていたのです。何しろ旦那様方の会合はまだだいぶ続きそうですからね。いつ何時お茶のご用命があるかもわかりませんし。そうですよね。では、どうしましょうか。私がルスバンを… I really can't stand Goda right now. Shannon felt a twinge of annoyance. Despite the fact that she had come here to help out as a favor, she was being forced to do the job of the person actually on duty, as though it were natural. Furthermore, after one-sidedly forcing that task on her, Goda had once again gone back to his magazine and had become immersed in his crossword puzzle. For the time being, as a sign of respect for her elder, Shannon bowed her head and she left the room to make the rounds. Getting a little angry had enabled her to bring the airy sensation she had been feeling until now under control a bit. Besides, she couldn't show this kind of face to Genji and Cannon. Until her heart was able to come down, she wanted a little time to herself, and maybe going around the mansion wasn't such a bad way to do that. From the dining hall, she began to hear the tumultuous voices of the family's discussion. Someone would speak at great length and would then be opposed by someone else. That rebuttal would continue in a very long, drawn-out fashion until opposed by yet another person. That kept on repeating. It was as though their displeasure was seeping out through the voices. She had been told to go to the guest house, so it would be bad if she was discovered by Kraus. Thinking of that, Shannon quick-footedly slipped by the entrance to the dining hall. Then inside the mansion controlled by darkness, she began to check that the house was all closed up, following a prearranged route. She walked down the hall, checking that each window was closed. On Okenjima, there was no human other than the family, so in actuality, closing up wasn't that terribly meaningful of a task. Until Natsuhi had scolded them that this attitude was careless, closing up had not been customary in the Ushiro Miya family. The metal fixtures on completely chilled windows were freezing, and every time she went to check on them, one by one, it felt like the glow in her heart seemed to cool down. Oh, oh my god. Just then, she thought she saw something flickering across the hall. 
It was like a golden butterfly. Flickering? Something like that shouldn't be visible beyond the darkness of the hall. Although she thought it was probably her eyes playing tricks on her, she killed her breathing for a brief moment. And, grasping a curtain, she fearfully gazed into the center of the hall. However, other than the occasional crack of thunder brightening the hallway, she was unable to glimpse any flicker again. It must have been her imagination after all. Maybe because she couldn't calm her heart, she saw something that didn't even exist. Shannon resumed checking the windows. However, in the back of her mind, a certain unnerving possibility had been resurrected. It was that which had been passed down amongst servants who served the Yoshiro Miya main family. That ghost story in which the mansion had different masters of the day and night. In which the master of the night, Beatrice, would sometimes fly around the mansion in the form of sparkling butterflies. I have goosebumps right now! Come to think of it, hadn't Kanan-kun said that he had once seen it for himself? He got sulky when I didn't believe him and told him he was just seeing things. Could it possibly... really... The raw or the thunder gave no answer. Oh, I'm kind of excited but nervous at the same time about what might happen. Going to the guest house, I suppose? Yes, we're not. <laughs> oh my, oh my. For a moment, I thought a jump scare might happen, but somehow this is a bit more ominous. There's a track called Butterfly. <laughs> this is all so creepy. It kind of feels like time has frozen. You know, with the ticking noise. There's a deep meaning behind that. But I won't know until much later on. That's my that's what I that's what I think. The second day, October 5th, 1986. Genji once again tightened his bow tie and looked outside through a crack in the curtains. Maybe the rain had died down a tiny bit since the previous night. But it didn't look like the thick rain clouds were planning to let any trace of the morning sun get by. The morning was dim and far from refreshing. Kenan finished checking his appearance and exited the washer. In a normal schedule, it was rare for anyone to have to suffer going straight from a midnight shift to a morning shift. 
it was a special system for just the two days of the family conference. But then, as long as the typhoon didn't leave today, the relatives' stay on this island would last until tomorrow. Kenan thought that it was best to be prepared for the special schedule to be extended one more day. The two of them left the guest house, opening their umbrellas. The rose garden had been devastated by the wind and rain last night. Even though they had spent several days making it beautiful to welcome the guests, it had only taken one stormy night to ruin it. Kenan sighed. The two headed for the mansion. They were supposed to meet up with Goda and prepare breakfast. Goda was such a perfectionist that he would undoubtedly have been up for some time already, and now be in the middle of preparing a breakfast, both exquisite and as elegant as glasswork. They reached the overhang by the entrance to the mansion and folded up their umbrellas. Genji took from his pocket a bundle of several keys and used it to unlock the front door. There was nothing on Nokenjima outside the Ushiro Miya family mansion, so there never used to be a custom of locking it up. Somehow, this is making me super nervous about what might happen. Is he going to open <laughs> the door to the mansion and find that there's no one inside at all? Oh. However, Natsuhi had ordered that it be part of their duties to lock up the mansion from around midnight to early morning. And unlocking in the early morning was to be done by the servants who had the morning shift. Since Skoda would begin the preparations for breakfast, as soon as he woke up, this task was to be undertaken by Genji and Kanon. Silence had fallen in the mansion, giving the impression that the mansion itself was still asleep. The two of them split up and began opening the curtains throughout the mansion. If the curtains remained closed, the inside of the mansion would be unable to shake off its gloom, as if it hadn't yet managed to escape the previous night. Cannon, following a well-versed procedure, went around the mansion opening one window after another without having to retrace his steps once. Even with this horrible weather, by opening the curtains, it began to feel just a little bit like morning. While doing that, he passed in front of the kitchen. Even though he hadn't yet smelled anything, his empty stomach began aching in anticipation of the scent of Goda's much bragged about cooking. Ohayou gozaimasu. <laughs> Auspicious. He tried to greet Goda, who had thought would be preparing the meal inside the kitchen, but Goda was nowhere to be seen. The kitchen was darkly lit, and never mind the curtains, the ventilation fan wasn't even spinning. It was still cold in the room without a hint of a flame, and of course no preparations for breakfast was taking place. Although it must not be allowed to happen, maybe Goda had overslept. But come on, Goda is such a like, you know, he wants to set the best impression for everyone, so no way will he ever oversleep. Servants are humans too. They can sometimes fail to wake up or something, and be late as a result. In the rare case of that happening, it was the virtue of a servant to casually smooth the situation over so as to not cause an unsightly scene, and to make sure that their masters never even noticed that such a mistake happened in the first place. Kenan took up the receiver of the phone fitted to the wall and dialed the extension number for the room where the servants slept. <sighs> He couldn't hear the characteristic sound of a dial tone. Kenan tried picking up the receiver again, but even so, he couldn't hear the usual dial tone. He tried dialing again, but it had no apparent effect. Could it be that the lightning last night had caused a mechanical fault and broken the internal telephone lines? The equipment in this mansion was all worn out. Kenan fully understood that even the smallest thing could have caused it to break down. 
and then gave up trying to wake him with the phone and dashed off to the room where the servant slept. How long had she slept until? How long had it been since she had woken and started lazily staring up at the ceiling? That vague sense of awakening was Natsuhi's usual morning experience. Okay, but at least Natsuhi is here. Her sleep was always light, and she wouldn't even have been able to sleep at all without medicine. To Natsuhi, sleeping was definitely not a happy thing. When she looked outside, she saw that it was still pouring. If she hadn't sensed a tiny amount of light, she might have mistakenly thought that it was still night. She herself was one of the hosts, so she mustn't wake up later than her guests. Urging herself on, she raised up her body, which still hadn't completely recovered from yesterday's weariness. While she was inside this room, no one would torment her. Her headache wouldn't get any worse than it already was. This room was her only peaceful space. So when she left, it meant returning to the world of her husband's siblings, probing each other's minds. Then, wouldn't it be better to just stay locked up in this room forever? Natsuhi smiled bitterly at this fantasy. She was starting to sound like Kinzo. <laughs> Even though most of the time she would call Kinzo names for staying locked up in his own room and taking no notice of anyone, the truth was that she actually longed to do so herself. Natsuhi gave her head a small shake and her fantasy was replaced by the reawakening of her usual headache. When she reached for the doorknob, trying to leave the room, her hand touched the scorpion charm that she had hung from it before going to sleep the previous night. Oh, that's sweet. She listened to what Jessica said. It was Maria's charm that Jessica had given Atsuhi. If she remembered correctly, Jessica had said something about it having the power to repel magic and that she should hang it from her doorknob. Maybe it was thanks to the charm that at least this room had been protected from her husband's sibling's malice. As she thought this, her mood began to get a little more cheerful. I feel so... Oh, I feel so much for Natsuhi. And Maria. Then Natsuhi remembered. That's right. Last night, I promised Jessica that I would give her a charm of my own in exchange for this one. Didn't I? Natsuhi opened a drawer of a dresser and took out an antique accessory case that she had treasured ever since she was a child. Inside, there were many small objects that Natsuhi had thought were valuable at the time. From amidst those, she pulled out a red pouch. Inside was a small round mirror about 10 centimeters across. It looked quite old, but the design on the back of the mirror was very ornate, and it felt like something with historical value. At the very least, it looked much more effective when compared to the other charm, which looked like a plastic scorpion key holder. She had heard that this mirror was a spiritual mirror to ward off evil spirits, and she had been given it specially by her grandmother when her grandfather's mementos had been distributed. It had been believed since ancient times that strange powers dwell within mirrors. Most likely, the way they reflect light created a belief that they also deflect misfortune and malice in the same way. So he returned the mirror to its pouch. It would probably be a fitting object to hand over to Jessica. Just as she was placing it in her pocket, the sound of someone knocking on the door suddenly echoed throughout the room. Hi! Ohayou gozaimasu, oksama. Genji de gozaimasu. Sochou kara mooshiwake gozaimasen. Ima ikimasu. Nani goto desu ka? 
No servant had ever come to her this early in the morning, and especially not directly. Maybe something bad had happened. For example, maybe some fatal oversight had been made during the preparations for breakfast, and the household would have been put to shame in front of the guests, or something. Natsuhi breathed out slowly, as if getting a headache, headache, <laughs> as if getting a head start on the troubles she was surely about to be told off. When she opened the door, Genji once again said a morning greeting to her while bowing deeply. Natsuhi tentatively responded, ご存知ですか。申し訳ございません。昨夜の落雷で電話機器に故障が出たようです。内線電話が普通になっておりますもので、直接のお伺いになってしまったことをお許しください。内線電話が普通？それは面倒になりましたね。修理は可能ですか？
。本家の楽しみは食事くらいがせいぜいですものね。<笑>エヴァさんも朝からご機嫌がよろしいようで何よりです。Natsuhi returned Eva's gaze, which was fiercely competitive, even though it was early in the morning, with a wary expression. Then Kenan jogged in. After bowing an apology to the relatives for running inside the mansion, he approached Genji and told him something in a small voice. Kanon, Gouda wa mada mitsukara nai no desu ka? Moshi wake gozaimasen, Oksama. Oyashiki nai mo guest house mo mawatta no desu ka? Mada. 一体どこへ行ったというのですとりあえず今はゴーダより朝食の準備が先決です。Of like、a warped, you know, 至急対応しなさい。はい。Kenan glanced at Genji. It looked like he had something else to report, but needed to ask Genji whether he was the right person to say it. Genji nodded and decided to give the report himself. Oksama. This is getting creepy. Gouda dake dewa arimasen. Danna sama no sugata mo arimasen. Oh my. Shushin ga? Hai. Oksama yori saki ni. Danna sama ni choshok no jumbi ga nai koto o go hokok shio to o moi. Shinshu o o k a g a i shita no desu ga. お姿がありませんでしたそれから旦那様だけではありませんルドルフ様ご夫妻とローザ様のお姿もありませんゲストハウスにも屋敷にもですかあはいゲストハウスのお部屋にもおられません When she had heard that Godao alone was missing, she had thought he might have slept in or was loafing around somewhere. But once she had heard that several of the relatives were also missing, she began to start thinking a little more optimistically. Last night's family conference might have continued all night, and in fact, might still be going on. It would then be imaginable that they had wanted to cool off their heads after being in that stuffy room. And had all gone off on a group walk through the rain. The part about cooling off their heads really sounded like something crowds would like to say. Probably, Goda had been called to go with them to aid them with something. Goda was not a man who lost track of time. He had to have understood that, if he did not return, the preparations for breakfast would be hindered. So, perhaps, as much as he'd like to leave, the atmosphere would not permit him to, and the conference was continuing in that manner, even this very moment. Yes, Natsuhi thought this to be an extremely persuasive theory. Natsuhi remembered the illusion that she had felt that morning of being sucked into a continuation of the previous night. And upon learning that the feeling wasn't just an illusion, She once again let out a deep, weary breath. Because the banquet of the filthy vultures circling around Kinzo's property was still continuing. Okata, Tay no Dokoka, Aruiwa Kaigan no Hode, I no Kawaras, Isan no Hanashio, Kurikai Stir no Desho. Tonikaku, Goda o Yobi Modosanaktewa, Itsma de Mochoshik no Jimmy got to know him as a. The Koto Naya. She had thought she had spoken in a small voice, but Hideyoshi had overheard her and managed to grasp the situation. Natsuhi snorted, her face still blank. Kanon, o m o t e o sagas de rasha. Goda o m i t s u k e t a r a s u g u n i modote c h o s h o k no jumbi o suri o tsutai n a s a Why not just make breakfast now and then find a. Okay, no. I'm exactly like Natsuhi right now. But I mean, if a priority is breakfast, someone else could make breakfast first. かしこまりました
夏姫さん表とは限らないわよお父様の書斎ってことはないかしらなるほど考えられん話やないで Why would Kinzo open his study to them? どういう話の流れかはわからんがお父さんの主催に場所を移してお父さんにも混じってもらって議論を続けてるっちゅう可能性は十分あるやろ I feel like Kinzo would never open his study Not to them at least そのような汚らわしい話題を好んでお父様が書斎へ招き入れることなど考えられませんあらそうじゃあ仕方ないわね源氏さんとカノン君は申し訳ないけど外を探してきてちょうだい確かに兄さんなら頭を冷やすために外を散歩しようなんて言い出しても不思議はないわたとえこんな天気でもね私はお父様の書斎に行ってくるわひょっとするとそこにいるかもしれないしね客人であるエヴァさんにそこまでのご足労はおかけできません私が行ってきます朝のご挨拶も兼ねてあらじゃあお願いするわねでも朝の挨拶を交わしてくれるかは疑わしいわね夏日姉さんってお父様とは仲よろしかったかしら仲が良いかは分かりかねますが後宮家の跡継ぎの妻を許されるだけの信頼を得ていると確信していますなーらーきっと返事くらいはしてくれるわねお父様とは朝食くらいご一緒したいの I'm sure Kinzo wouldn't even respond to Eva so don't stir shit up <笑>ぜひ降りてきてくださるよ説得してくれないかしら私たちはすしっかり嫌われちゃってるみたいだけどそこまで信頼を得ている夏日姉さんの言うことなら聞いてくれそうですものそこまで短歌を切ってお父様を説得できず一人で降りてきちゃったりしたら信頼を得ているなんて二度と言えないかもね<笑>自信はありませんが努力はします夏日 responded discouraged However, knowing Kinzo's temperament, she had absolutely no confidence in her ability to bring him out. Eva herself was treating it like a joke, expecting that it couldn't be done. But even so, Natsuhi would lose face if she gave up, said it was impossible for her to, and let Eva go instead. Eva's mean spirited and unreasonable demand caused Natsuhi's tightly clenched fist to shake. When Genji realized this, he spoke softly to her over her shoulder. Oksama, Yoroshikereba, Koreo Omochikudasai. So do I? Genji handed Natsuhi a sparkling gold key of ornate design. It was the key to Kinzo's study. Oh? The study would always lock itself and couldn't be unlocked as long as Kinzo forbade entrance. However, since Genji was especially trusted by Kinzo, he was allowed to carry a key to that door. でもこの鍵を使ったら、あなたも咎めを受けるのではありませんか。親方様は深くお休みになられているとき、扉を叩くくらいではお耳に届かないこともございます。それに。Until now, Natsuhi had thought of Genji as a cold servant who worked directly under Kinzo and would never work for her. But it looked like she would have to alter her understanding of him. She wanted to communicate her feelings of thanks, but by then, Genji had already turned his back on her and was walking down the corridor with Kanon. But as Natsuhi watched them go, the words that reached her from behind were sneering. Yosan Kaeba, Kuchigasugirude. 
すまんが夏日姉さんお父さんのことをよろしく頼むわ夏日 left without replying at a swift pace her heels clacking loudly with every step After all that excitement the previous night, there was no way anyone was going to wake up soon. George and Nikki, Jessica and I were snoring loudly on the bed in the cousin's room, but Maria, who didn't join in and who had gone straight to bed the previous night, suddenly and completely opened her eyes. As she rubbed her sleepy eyes and looked around, the loud snoring coming from the three cousins continued. For a while, Maria had to think about what had happened. After that, she realized that her mother was not with her and quickly got lonely. Maria left the cousin's room and had tried to head to the room that had been arranged for her and her mother. Paying no heed to the three who were sleeping soundly, she made a loud slamming sound on her way out. <laughs> In response, Butler mumbled and rolled over in his sleep, but it wasn't enough to wake him up. After a while, Maria returned, once again opening the door with a lively bang. <sighs> When she had left the room, her face had been sleepy, but after returning, she now looked discontent. After that, she climbed up on Battler's bed, which happened to be the closest, and started yelling and jumping on it like it was a trampoline. <laughs> That's so cute! After making sure that I was awake, Maria jumped over onto George Aniki's bed and started bouncing on that too. In that manner, the three of us were all greeted with an extremely pleasant awakening. ありがとう、マリアちゃん。起こしてくれたんだね。僕たちは夕べが遅かったから寝坊しちゃったのを起こしてくれたんだね。でも、もう少しだけ起こし方を優しくしてくれると完璧だったかな。ジョージ兄さんは本当に大人だよ。尊敬するぜ。もうすぐ7時なんだな。Not Maria kept groaning, ooh, and looking unhappy. It seemed like she wasn't simply lonely because she couldn't find her mother, but was actually unhappy because her mother wasn't in the place she thought she was, and this made her feel like she'd been tricked. If we could have just told her where her mother was, that might have been enough to satisfy her. But unfortunately, as long as we were here, we had no way of finding that out. どうせ朝食に行くことになるんだし、屋敷の方に行こうぜ。そうだな。マリア、一緒に屋敷へ行こうぜ。きっと、ローザおばさんもそこさ。おお。ママはお屋敷。なら行く。おお。そうだね。お
And even aside from the whole Eva issue, there was a problem that yesterday, during this once a year family conference, he had stayed locked up all day and had still not come out to greet the guests. Even though he was the head, no, especially because he was the head, he couldn't fail to make an appearance. Could she convince him? Atsuhi readied herself and, using the key that she had borrowed from Genji, opened the door. Oh man. A sweet stench that seemed to eat into her brain poured from the narrow opening she had created, and though she was prepared for it, she couldn't help but grimace. Thinking that he might still be asleep, Atsuhi entered the room quietly. Oh, he's not asleep. When she did, Kinzo, already awake, was looking down out of the window. Oh, she's nervous. Kinzo spoke with his back still facing her. His voice was not harsh but calm and Natsuhi was slightly reassured. However, he was at least in a bad enough mood that he had ignored the sound of all that knocking even though he had been awake. Natsuhi wasn't able to break that tension. もしわけございませんでした。現地さんにお願いして、書斎の鍵をお借りさせていただきました。ほう。現地がか。我が友がそれに足ると思ったならば、話を聞かぬわけにもいくまい。して、私に何を言おうか。はい。もうじき朝食
クラウスが女でお前がその夫であったなら<笑>いやそれは言うまいそれはどういう意味ですかお父様ナツヒはショッ If Kinzo's words just now had met literally, they would have been more than enough to make up for all she had suffered up to that point. Kinzo once again faced away from her. He had told her to forget it, but Natsuhi couldn't help feeling a warmth in her heart. Hotosama. Aww. Kono Natsuhi wa. Chi wa tsnagarazu tomo. お父様の娘です。後宮家の名誉も栄光も、そしてお父様が残されたものもすべて、この夏日が必ずや守ってみせますから。お前に片欲のわしをまとう資格はない。しかし、お前の心には確かに片欲のわしが刻まれている。ならばお前は間違いなく我が血族で後ろ宮家の栄光を引き継ぐものだお前の衣服にわしがないことを嘲笑う者もいようしかしそれに耳を貸すことはない心にわしを持つ者だけが真の私の血族なのだお前を後ろ宮家に迎えられたことを今は光栄に思っている。This is probably the, the sweetest, sweet is not even a right word, but the nicest thing that Kinzo has ever said to anyone. I'm sure Natsuhi is also really touched and happy about this. Without saying anything more, Kinzo remained with his back to Natsuhi. However, Natsuhi couldn't help but feel something warm well up inside her as she hadn't felt since long ago, when she had been just a child. Natsuhi bowed silently to his back and left the room. Ara, just a good timing, wasn't it? How are you looking at your father? When Natsuhi left the study, she saw Eva climbing the stairs, and their eyes met. Eva was smirking unpleasantly, thinking that Natsuhi had just left the room trudgingly after failing to, to convince Kinzo. However, the way Natsuhi was now, such a frivolous laugh would not disturb her. She was not permitted to wear the family crest on her clothing. But she was permitted to wear it in her heart. So she spoke calmly, clearly, and confidently with the dignity of the one who would protect the glory of the Ushiro Mia family. Oto Sama wa, Shinzo Kaigi ni wa oide ni nara nai sou desu. Kegarawashi i gidai ni kanshin wa nai to ose desu. Toka nan toka itchatte. お父様を説得できなかったんなら素直にそう言えばいいじゃない哀れですねお父様が嘆かれるお気持ちも分かろうというものです<笑>それはどういう意味よ Natsuhi did not answer Just as Kinzo had done earlier she showed Eva her back as she headed down the stairs Struggling together what had happened Eva could only determine that she had been made fun of and that something had happened to quickly bolster Natsuhi's confidence. Even so, she didn't have the courage to risk Kinzo's wrath. Unable to even knock on the door, she could only scratch at the air in front of her, pluck her tongue, and follow after Natsuhi. So, 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 書斎の中にはいませんでしたお父様が夫たちの下船な話のために入室を許すこともありえませんから行き先を知ることもないでしょう下に降りて使用人たちが探してくれるのを待ちましょう Wait, but Kinzo was looking out of the window, so You know, I feel like Kinzo knows something <笑>朝食は遅れますが
お茶でもいかがですエヴァさん別に結構よ Eva couldn't hide her confusion over the complete difference in Natsuhi's demeanor. She was acting so boldly, and while Eva hated to admit it, she even had a sense of dignity about her. Unable to find fault with anything, she could only follow Natsuhi back to the parlor. When the two of them returned to the parlor, not only Hideyoshi, but the four children and Nanjo as well had gathered there. Genji, who had been talking with Hideyoshi, reported the current situation when he noticed that Natsuhi had returned. Shujin tachi wa mada mitsukara nai no desu ka? Hai, moushake gozaimasen. Ato, Kumasawa ga choushok no junbi ni hairimashita. Mousukoshi, jikan wo itadakitai to no koto desu. The clock read a little past 8 a.m. Eight o'clock was the time the breakfast was supposed to have started. The mere fact that the hosts had gone over that time limit was a disgrace under normal circumstances. Right, I was thinking about Shannon too, because we haven't seen anything. Shannon? How many people couldn't be found? With the number of people having grown so large, it was starting to feel truly unpleasant, as though they were the only ones being left out on something interesting. At the very least, it looked like the children, no, Maria especially felt the same way. She was indignant, the stomach grumbling, almost as though her mother and the others had left her alone to go off and eat something delicious without her. Trying to fix a bad mood, the elder children were flipping through the channels on the television, trying to find a program that might interest Maria. Nanjo was sitting on the sofa, gazing blissfully at the children while reading a book. No doubt it was a book about chess. The sound of footsteps came rushing towards them with a pitter patter. There was only one set, so they realized before they saw the source that it was Kraus, not Kraus. And the rest, but probably canon. Oksama, Hisleshmas. So no yos deva, Mitskera nakata yo desne. Moshuake gozaimasen, Mada. Mo juven des, Gokuro kakemashta. She didn't know where they were, but they had to be somewhere on this island. They hadn't put anything in their mouths since last night, so their stomachs must be growling about now. They would surely saunter in any time now. Natsuhi was already dumbfounded, and she had begun to think that there was no urgent need to find them right then. Natsuhi, acting as though the release intention had caused a new surge in her headache, left the parlor. Kanan tried to call her as she left, but Natsuhi departed swiftly. どうしたまだ何かあるのかはい旦那様方のお姿を見つけることはできませんでしたがそのカネンサウンドエヴァイシフ He still didn't know where they were but maybe he had found something with some relation to that When Eva and Hideyoshi noticed this exchange of words they came over They had probably noticed the slightly strange way カネン was acting どうしたんや、カノン君。クラウス兄さんたちは見つかったんか実は、バラ庭園の倉庫の様子がおかしいのです。お、oh、前。様子がおかしいというのはどういう意味だそれが、その、なんと説明すればいいのか。カノン、once again, hesitated. He wasn't speaking anything like you'd expect from the usually fearless カノン。Eva and Hideyoshi exchanged quizzical looks at this display. どういうこと倉庫の中に兄さんたちがいたんじゃないのいえ、中はこれから調べます。So he hasn't seen the inside, but he came and reported back and is already nervous, anxious. Oh man. 
Is it gonna be like blood? The same thing that happened to Natsuhi's doorknob? その鍵を取りに戻ったところなのですがそのようわからんがとにかく中を調べればいいだけの話じゃないかその倉庫の鍵はどこにあるんや使用任意室にありますすぐに中を確かめましょう and then dashed off to the servant room and returned with the key Genji left the parlor, saying that he would go check, but Eva and Hideyoshi also followed. Where was this something odd about the storehouse that had caused a usually fearless canon to hesitate? It was the pouring outside, but their curiosity of it is something that canon couldn't talk about, won out. While the children made a big fuss watching television, canon and the rest dashed off to the entrance. My heart is pounding right now. The Rose Garden Storehouse was a place that housed various tools used to manage the garden. It was definitely not a pretty building. Because of its appearance, it had been built hidden in the corner of the Rose Garden. Canon, Genji, Eva, and Hideyoshi came cutting across the Rose Garden, holding umbrellas. They entered a small path just off the Rose Garden, which was not used by those simply appreciating the garden, but only by those maintaining it. As they dashed further along it, the front of the storehouse came into view. Oh, oh, I'm scared. It was a very old shed of a storehouse, and compared to the flawlessly perfect beauty of the rose garden, it was pretty seedy looking. It was easy to understand why it had been built in a hard to see place. Eva and Hideyoshi arrived at the storehouse long after Kanon and Genji. Oh my. Oh my. Oh no, I'm scared. <laughs> when Eva looked at where Kenan was pointing, she was at a loss for words. I'm really... I'm scared to click. Noticing this, Hideyoshi also followed Kenan's finger and was likewise too shocked to speak. Please don't be a jump scare, please don't be a jump scare. <laughs> the entrance to the storehouse was a kind of shutter. And there... Everyone there now understood why Kenan had been unable to find words that could describe what he saw. On the shutter, which was completely filthy from being exposed to wind and rain for so long, plastered on it... Oh god, I'm scared. Oh, oh, holy shit, that is scary! Something that looked like a strange dark red liquid? Mucus? Or maybe it was some sticky paint? Some kind of ghastly substance had been used to draw an indescribably eerie shape. Oh goodness, I have chills right now. The rain had caused it to drip down in several places like fresh blood leaking from an open wound. There was no longer any point in being choosy with words. A ghastly dark red substance meant to look like blood had been used to draw some kind of figure or mark, intended to suggest something ominous. Two concentric circles were drawn there, and inside them was a design that looked like a cross. The four ends of the cross were widely exaggerated, and it looked like some kind of crest from somewhere around Europe. And in the cracks between these shapes, written closely packed together, were some unfamiliar characters. Or possibly symbols. Oh goodness. <laughs> it reminds me of what um Kinzo said about the de demonic rituals and Roulette? With reference to this ghastly shape, drawn of a deep red dripping substance, 
Hideyoshi's comparison was not unreasonable. これ。いつ書かれたの昨日。雨が降り出す前にここに来ましたが、その時には何も書かれてませんでした。他の方々の目に触れる前に何とかしよう。ご覧になられたら、お深いになられると。そうね。ただの倉庫小屋とはいえ
but they couldn't deny that they were a little insecure and concerned after seeing the adults run off into the rain, disregarding their appearance. Jessica's insecure words spoke for all of them. Hey, Maria. Are you coming? Or are you watching TV? Oh, Maria is good. She didn't want them to save Maria just in case, but well, I guess they're not really thinking of this situation. Maria, I'm going to go back to the TV. I'm going to go back to the TV. By the time the kids went outside, they had lost sight of the adults who had left earlier. But it looked like Jessica had a pretty good idea of where they had gone from the direction they had been running. Following Jessica, they ran through the rain-soaked rose garden. It felt like the wind suddenly got stronger. The malicious sound of thunder began to ring out like it had the previous night. It felt like something eerie had surrounded the island and was trying to stop them from moving forward. Jessica, what's going on in this Jessica, there was a dog in the forest. There was a dog in the forest. Just as Jessica had said, a storehouse came to view in front of them. They could also see the adults there. The shutter to the storehouse was open and several of the adults looked as though they were searching for something. For some reason, only Natsuhi was outside the storehouse, not even holding an umbrella. She was facing away from them and it looked like she was hanging her head. Kraus? The ones who had just left, Genji, Nanjo, and Natsuhi, and the ones who had left before them, Kanan, Eva, and Hideyoshi, made this a large gathering of people, but there was absolutely no bustle of activity. When Natsuhi realized that the children had come, a terrible expression rose to her face, and she ran at them with her arms spread wide. <laughs> However, no. Because of that, the kids saw that scene which Natsuhi was trying to keep them away from. Oh, no. Inside the storehouse, with the shutter wide open, a flickering fluorescent light shone down. And over there... Oh, goodness, goodness. Please don't show any scary scene. I don't think my heart can take it. Jessica's piercing shriek ran out. But that was just because Jessica's scream was the loudest. The same thing spilled out of Battler and George's mouth as well. Goodness, goodness. Eva, just like Natsuhi, spread her arms and with a terrible expression, roared at the kids. When Natsuhi had spread her arms, one might have thought that she was trying to prevent them from advancing any further. However, right now, that wasn't why Eva was spreading her arms. She was trying to hide that terrible scene from the kids. It was her mother's heart trying to protect the eyes and hearts of us children by attempting to block our view of that terrible scene by at least the width of one of her arms. Oh goodness. Oh goodness, <laughs> I had seen this kind of cheap scene all too often. In manga, TV, anime and movies, I had seen it over and over again. This was just, just seeing something appear in real life that I had seen plenty of times before in some of those more sensational movies, wasn't it? That alone shouldn't. Ah, uh, but that suit, it's that old bastards, isn't it? Rudolph? I get it, then that's Uncle Krause, and Kiriya-san, and Auntie Rosa. Oh no. Oh my god, I'm just trying to process everything right now, but... Like I expected it, 
but it still didn't hit me until just now. I'm just glad that it didn't show any explicit scene of any murder, but still. What's rigor mortis? I better go search that up later. But six hours, um, now it's like slightly past eight, I think. So about two a.m., I think. めったなことはいい。私は町医者だ。検視は専門外だ。ちゅうことはないや。殺しただけじゃ飽き足らず。さらにこんな無体なことをしたんいうんか。悪魔や。悪魔の所業や。Aunt Natsuhi caught Jessica in her arms and Auntie Eva caught George Anki. So I was the only one who could approach the entrance to the storehouse. Oh, poor battler too. Uh, if only there had been someone here to catch me too. I wouldn't have needed to have this horrible evil scene burn into my eyes. Right. No, that's not it. I'm standing here not because the people who would catch me aren't here, but because the people who would catch me are right there. Just as Jessica had said, it did look like a storehouse used to keep gardening tools. A lawnmower and its replacement blades, a grass sickle and a hammer, a saw and some construction tools, piled up potted plants and bags of fertilizer, and treated just the same, the corpses of several people had been laid to rest there. No had been thrown in there. Oh goodness. I could tell them by their clothes. That old bastard and Kirie san, Uncle Kraus and Auntie Rosa. Further back, Goda san and there's still more of them? How many people died? Fucking hell, I can't even count them on one hand. God fucking damn it. I didn't know whether it had been one of these gardening tools, which, if used for something other than their intended purpose, could be definitely wielded by a naked brutality. Or whether some horrible tool had been brought in here, specifically for this. Whatever the case, the bodies lying around here, each of them had been given an atrocious makeover. This isn't damn makeover. This is more like their faces had been plowed. Oh goodness, their faces were smashed, forced into an expression that a normal person couldn't even make after that. I couldn't tell where the eyes or the nose were, but I could find their mouth because it was gaping wide, the ridges of the teeth exposed. But the front teeth were missing, and even the cheek that should have covered them were all torn up and exposed. The stylish makeup that he spent way too much fa time fasting over for a guy is no help at all. ですもさ。こんな男と付き合うのはやめろって言ったんだ。あんたまでそこまでお目に合わされる理由は何もねえじゃねえかよ。顔がねえ。顔がねえよ。くそくそくそ。バトラさん。
やすらかに眠る顔ってやつを拝ませてくれるんじゃねえのかよ顔がねえんだよ俺の親父とキリエさんの顔がねえんだよどういう顔して死んじまったのかそれすらもわかんねえんだよなんだよ俺は親父たちのことを思い出すときはこのくちゃくちゃの化け物みてえな顔をいつも思い出さったのかよそいつは最高だぜクソ親父のニヤニヤとした顔を思い出さなくていいんだからよ最高だぜ最高だぜでもよキリエさんの顔くらいはいいだろキリエさんの悪党じゃねえたまにはムカつくと思ったけどよちょいとかっこいい俺の姉気分だったお人じゃねえかよこりゃねえよこんなのってねえよクロスおじさんなんかまだマシじゃねえか顔面じゃなくて側面だぜ少なくとも顔半分は残ってるじゃねえかよまだマシだぜまだマシだぜTo shut out my reckless words, Jessica tried to fill her ears with the sound of her own screaming. Yosunda, Bataraku, Mo Yosunda, Mo Yosunda, Aniki, Aniki. I can't, this is so, so hard. Disregarding age and appearance, I fell to my knees, clinging to Aniki's waist and sobbing. It was as if I was crying on behalf of everyone there. Representing the feelings of everyone there, I screamed over and over. クラウスおじさんルドルフおじさんキリエおばさんにローザおばさんゴーダさんで5人いや6人やここにもう一人おるシャーネン The body that Hideyoshi was looking down on now was hidden in the shadow of a mountain of random objects In a blind spot to George, who stood by the entrance. So George couldn't tell whose body it was. Therefore, George cursed himself. He cursed that part of himself that imagines the worst and is always right. So, my father's body was fallen in the shadow of my father. Oh, my father. I want to say some things, but I'm just so overwhelmed by everything that happened. George was completely silent. He shook slightly, his lower lip trembling. He wanted to run up to his beloved, screaming and crying. But before rashly running up to her, he mustered up all of his strength. And asked his father. Shannon, mo, Klaus, o じさん たちと同じなのかな。Hideyoshi deeply understood the meaning of those words, so he couldn't give George a quick answer. No, he thought that George right now. That was the only possible, sincere and loving response. When George had asked whether she was the same, he had meant to ask whether her corpse was the same as the others. Since Hideyoshi hadn't denied it, 
It meant that the body was just as horrible. シャノンを見てもいいかな。いや、あかん。どうしてだって、もう二度とシャノンの顔を見られないんだよ。その最後の顔をどうして見たらいけないんだよ。お前が最後にシャノンちゃんに会ったのは昨日か。そうか。そのシャノンちゃんは別れ際にお前にどんな顔を見せたんや。素敵な笑顔だったよ。After receiving the ring, and she was bewildered even though her heart should have been decided. Bashful so embarrassed to show him the face that she had ran away. That expression was revived in George's mind. So Nara Shannon Chamo Sono Ego Umaini Nukushtai to Nega Uhazia. Hideyoshi looked down upon Shannon's body lying at his feet. Just like the other bodies, it was in such a horrible state that it would make anyone want to cover their eyes. Half of their face had been smashed off, and no more than half of her expression remained. If that remaining half, soaked red with blood, had been wiped clean, that graceful smiling face might have peeked out. Only half of it. Without thinking, Hideyoshi slept his hand over his eyes. How cruel. If only all of it had been crushed, if they were going to crush it, then he might have been able to deceive George's heart for a while by saying that it was just someone else wearing Shannon's clothes. Yet, they had left half of their face. It caused the body so much humiliation, and also made it clear that this body was none other than Shannon. How inhuman, how monstrous. There at Hideyoshi's feet, trying his best to burn the image of the remaining half of Shannon's expression into his eyes was Kenneth. Kenneth was not crying. Tears had risen to his eyes, but they did not drip down. I have tissues with me this time, don't worry. But that didn't mean that he wasn't feeling as much sadness as everyone else. Losing Shannon, who had lived with him in the gospel house. Whom he had loved as a sister. Must have been just the same as losing a blood relative. Joji, Shannon-chan is definitely thankful for you. You... かしいところを見られとなかったんや。きっとお前が耐えてくれたこと感謝しとるで。わかってる。わかってるよ、父さん。わかってるよ。George leaned against the outside wall of the storehouse, sinking down powerlessly. 父さん、頼みがあるんだ。なんや。僕の代わりに見てほしいんだ。シャノンは指に指輪をつけてるかな。指輪？ちょいと見てみる。Oh no! Hideyoshi crouched down. As he did, Cannon silently pointed to one of Shannon's hands. ああ、あるで。なかなかの値打ちもんや。それはどっちの手のどの指にあるのかな。と、左手の薬指や。そっか、シャノンちゃん、婚約しとったんか。ジョージ、あなた、まさか。エヴァ、今はそんなん関係ないで。
シャノンちゃんは男に将来を約束されとったんや。一生を幸せにしちゃると男に言わせたんや。それが誰かは問題とちゃうで。男にそこまで言わしめて、女の崩壊やないか。いつこの指輪をもらったんかは知らん。誰が渡したかも知らん。だが、それでも、シャノンちゃんは指輪をもらえたんや。そして、それを受け入れ、左の薬指に通したんや。指を送った男もきっと喜んだんとちゃうか ?Most of the people there, Hideyoshi was simply disturbed by this extraordinary situation and was blurting out strange things.But to those who really knew the truth about George and Shannon's relationship, Everything he said made sense. So, George stood up. The traces of tears still streaked his face, but his expression had returned to its usual calm. Let's go. Batrak, Jessica, Chan. For this reason, we are here. We are here. We are here. We are here. Jessica sniffled once, and trying to say that she was all right, she showed her face to her mother, who had been holding her the whole time. When she faced George again, she once again had on her usual face. Although she couldn't recover her smile, Butler kept on crouching in front of his parents' bodies. すまねえな。がっつり泣いたら落ち着いたぜ。親父の野郎。普段はクソクソ言ってるくせに。ちょっと信じまったくらいでピーピー泣くんじゃねえぜって。流行ってやがれ。仕方ねえだろ。親が死
じせめて主人たちの顔を何かで覆ってやることはできませんかこのような姿をさらすことは当人にとっても屈辱的でしょうかはい Genji picked up several towels hanging inside the storehouse when Eva stopped him in a shrill voice ちょっとちょっとお待ちなさいよここは犯行現場なんでしょなら変に手を加えちゃダメよ私たちは混乱してて現場に土足で踏み入っちゃったけどそれはきっと警察の捜査の邪魔になったわよ Eva is surprisingly clear minded in this situation <laughs> Natsuhi glared at Eva testily. Objectively speaking, Eva was right. Even so, she glared at Eva as though accusing her of refusing to do those tragic corpses, which had been humiliated even after death, the simple kindness of covering their faces. However, Eva had spoken both calmly and correctly. This horrible state was definitely not an accident, it was a crime. Someone had killed them. It was a murder case. In that case, they should be careful not to disturb the site. They had to aid the police as much as possible so that they might hand over a clue that could be used to find the detestable culprit. I'm going to be a little bit of いかがなさいますかそうですねわかりましたここを閉ざしなさいそれから念のためここに別の施錠をするように別の施錠ええここに来た時シャッターの鍵は閉じていましたということはシャッターの鍵を使い犯人が施錠したということです確かに道理やじゃあここを開けた限り犯人の指紋が残ってるんとちゃうんか警察に証拠として提出する価値はあるでしょうけどカノン君が普通に持ってここを開けるのに使用しちゃったわ多分カノン君の指紋も付着しちゃってるわよそしてその鍵はさっき源氏さんに手渡され源氏さんも素手で受け取ってる大した証拠にはなりそうにないわねそれは不用心でした But you couldn't have known. 申し訳ございません源氏さんこの倉庫の鍵は他にもあるんかいいえこの一つだけですということは犯人はその鍵を使用人室から持ち出しそして律儀に元の場所に戻したちゅうことになるなおお。Hideyoshi's theory sounded plausible, but was actually very strange if you thought about it. Why would they go to all the trouble of returning a key they stole? No, if you think about it even more deeply, there are some even more bizarre points. Usually, when a criminal hides a body, they are trying to delay the point at which it will be found and use that time to escape. The actual place where the six were killed wasn't necessarily here. But they had been killed somewhere on this island. And it would be normal to think that the reason they had been carried to this storehouse was to hide the bodies and delay the discovery of the crime. But that graffiti drawn on the shutter that looked like an eerie magic circle had eloquently indicated that the corpses were hidden there. It didn't specifically say that they were here, but after six people had gone missing, By making such an obvious scribble and even returning the key to open it, it seemed almost as though someone had wanted the corpses to be discovered there. とにかく、一度は犯人が開け閉めをした施錠だけでは信用できません。犯人の手からもこの場所を保護する意味で、施錠を新たにしたいと言っているのです。いい案だと思います。私も賛成です。Genji fished around inside the storehouse and unsealed a brand new padlock, which had been inside a small box. 鍵は
どうなさいますか私が持ちましょう責任を持って警察に手渡します I don't know if I should say this now but I'm just a little bit suspicious of Natsuhi Natsuhi took the key to the padlock from Genji's hand After that they all exited and lowered the shutter Because of that The corpses were once again sealed behind a shutter covered with that gruesome magic circle. Genji crouched down in front of the shutter to fasten the new padlock. In addition to the main lock on the shutter, there is sometimes a place where you can attach your own lock in front of it. This was one of those types. In the midst of the roar of the thunder and the pouring rain, the storehouse stood there, ominously. On its closed shutter was the magic circle. Drawn in a creepy blood like substance and swallowing up the bodies of six whole people. To Natsuhi, putting the new lock on may not have been entirely to preserve the scene for the police, but rather, she might have felt like she wanted to shut that mouth for all eternity, to prevent any more victims from being swallowed by that eerie demon. So, let's go, everyone. ご速度をありがとうございました源氏は急いで警察に連絡を戻りましたらすぐに連絡します The adults left the storehouse Oh god The ghastly magic circle drawn on the shutter Still swallowing the six bodies Loomed eerily Occasionally lit up by the lightning Oh Eight forty five AM Curtain Rise on Tragedy. Okay, first let me explain a bit of why I think Natsuhi could be possibly the culprit, but also why I don't think she's the culprit. Because my gut initial gut feelings just say that, you know, she she's like the one of the only ones who doesn't have an alibi when Maria was given the umbrella so she was alone in her room i think with a headache so that alone is you know a little suspicious but then again she also has a valid reason because she was chased out during that moment but also you know i'm going about this very logically i haven't really dug deep into possible motivations oh yes the other thing was that she was the only other person other than Kraus who knows of the truth behind Kinzo's gold that there really is gold so you know I mean financial motivations etc etc but she also doesn't seem like the kind of person who would murder the family just for some gold of course if there is greater uh, ambitions outside of that money then maybe maybe natsuki might have a reason that i haven't really dug deep into but believe me i'm working on it i was just thinking this because she had that you know so-called heart-to-heart conversation with kinzo but it shows that she really puts the Ushiro Mia family above her own family she really respects and you could say love the Ushiro Mia family so that's why I don't think she is a culprit but <laughs> at the same time she could be I think I'm confusing myself here but she is still on my list of potential culprits although All of them are suspicious. She is one of the few that is jumping out at me, at least right now. Then there is also Nanjo. I bring Nanjo up because I remember that scene where the golden butterfly was like flying in after Shannon sees it. Then it seemed like time stopped and we get a glimpse into what each of the character is doing or where. Where they were, 
and Nanjo was the only one who was shrouded in darkness. And that really stood out to me because I initially thought he would be with Kinzo, but when I saw that Nanjo popped out on his own and Kinzo appeared in his study, that made me a little bit suspicious. Nanjo was in some unknown place in darkness doing something we don't know. So that was just immediately suspicious, although aside from that, Nanjo hasn't really like raised any red flags for me. But these are two that I have my eye on right now. Okay, I also have the epitaph um, open <laughs> in a document so that I can read it again. And what I didn't realize initially that I only realized after editing the video was that the title or the of the chapter or the sub chapter was something like the six chosen by the key as sacrifices something like that right and well in the first on the first twilight we have offered the six chosen by the key as sacrifice sacrifices and that was it just gave me chills when i realized that and that it feels like a hint on the second twilight the two who are close feels very obvious that it would be uh, Hideyoshi and Eva although I initially thought that it would be George and Shannon but obviously Shannon is not around so we only have uh, Hideyoshi and Eva left <sighs> so I'm I can't say I'm looking forward to it, I don't, but I do want to know how it plays out. That's kind of what I have for today. Just a lot of speculation, tears, and shock. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think. <laughs> Am I on the right track? Is it a spoiler if you let me know I'm on the right track or not? Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time and bye!